I get asked about valuations a lot. I think there's a real appeal to this division just because a lot of the work revolves around financial modeling, which is a pretty sexy skill set to have on your belt. So in this video, I want to talk about what does the valuation division actually do? What does the work look like? And what does the exit opportunities from this division look like? But before we dig deep into that, I think it's important to take a step back and get philosophical for one second and think about why do we need a dedicated valuations team in the first place? Because you're probably thinking like, don't the investor bankers who advise on M&A transactions do their own financial modeling and know how to do this already? So a good analogy to use to understand what the valuations team actually do is to think about a quantitative surveyor. These guys aren't the ones in charge of the construction project, nor are they the one who are financing it. They're just coming in as a third party to give an opinion on the cost, the details and the logistics on what's going on in the project. This is similar for evaluations teams. They aren't the ones doing the advising themselves. They just come in to give a third party opinion on what's going on. So I would broadly categorize the need for evaluations into three parts. Transactional reasons, financial reporting reasons and commercial slash personal dispute reasons. In terms of transactional reasons, what is the evaluation team actually doing here? I'll give an example. Think about a company that's being approached for an acquisition and they're being told this is the price that we want to pay for your company. And they could get an investment banker involved and start the M&A process. But before they get to that stage, they might want to seek a third party opinion just to get an idea on how much they'll be able to sell the company for. Another scenario is if a company is looking to go to market to raise equity or debt. Obviously, they're going to have an investment banker on their team advising on the transactions, telling all the investors that, oh, this company is worth hundreds of billions. But obviously, this is going to be biased because the investment bankers are making the fee based off of how much they're able to raise for the company. So they're always going to be giving the company a valuation at the higher end of the spectrum. So it poses the question, you know, where would you get an unbiased opinion on this particular matter? So obviously, this is a situation in which someone from the big four valuations team would be able to help out. Aside from the transactions work, the valuations team play a fundamental report for the financial reporting of assets. And you might be thinking, you know, isn't this the job of the external auditors? What does that have to do with the valuations team? Well, to put it simply, the work that's required to be carried out is above the remit for auditors. Again, let me paint a scenario for you. Company A has acquired company B, but how would you go and record that on the financial statements? It isn't as simple as adding the two numbers together on the balance sheet to get a new number. And there's also other complicated things to consider, like what if this was a cross-border transaction? You might have one company that's in the UK and follows their accounting standards and you might have another company that's in the Philippines and has a completely different set of accounting standards. So the way that an asset is recorded in one company might be completely different to the way that it's recorded in a different country. And so then there's a very complicated task of moving one set of accounting standards to another in order to get the set of consolidated financial statements for the parent company. So as you can see, the task can get pretty technical pretty fast and it's not as simple as putting numbers into an Excel spreadsheet and in order to get evaluation from the financial model. And then you also get other things like PPAs and fair value adjustments and goodwill that I won't get into in this video. In terms of financial reporting, the evaluations team also play a fundamental part for private equity companies because you have PE funds with a massive portfolios of companies which are essentially illiquid assets. And because these aren't publicly traded, they don't actually know what the value of these companies are over time. So when it comes to recording the financial statements, they're gonna need a specialist valuations team to come in and to do this work for them. I was speaking to one of my friends in the valuations team at KPMG and he was telling me about a particular case that he was working on in which a high net worth family were currently going through a divorce and they needed a third party to come in to discuss the value of the assets that's gonna be split up between them. But from my understanding, this work is more the exception rather than the norm. Most of the work tends to be more on the financial reporting and perhaps the transaction side of things. So what does the work actually involve? You probably hear things like financial modeling being thrown around quite a lot. Well, when it comes to valuations, there's two main schools of thoughts when it comes to valuing an asset. The fundamental approach and the market approach. So the fundamental approach bases the value of the company on its ability to generate cash flow in the future. In very simple terms, the way that they do this is that they look at the company's current cash flows and its ability to generate cash flow in the future based on some growth rates. And they discount these future cash flows to the present value in order to get evaluations. And this is something that you've probably heard of before called a discounted cash flow or a DCF. The market approach is a different way of doing things and it's probably a more intuitive way of thinking about it. In basic terms, it's valuing the company based on what other companies in the market are currently trading at. So for example, if you have a broadband company which has a few hundred thousand subscribers that is based in the UK, you would perhaps look at other broadband companies with similar number of subscribers or with similar numbers of revenue or EBITDA and you would use that as a goalpost in order to measure the value of the company that you're looking at. This is what you would refer to as trading comparables. Another type of market approach that's commonly used is president transactions. Basically, this is looking at transactions that have happened in the past and look at the money that was paid for those companies in those scenarios. You would use those transactions as a case study in order to put forward to say that because these transactions happened at the past at this price and these companies were similar to our company, 
Therefore, we think our company is also similarly priced to these companies as well. In terms of the actual division, something that you should know is that the valuations team is a lot smaller than the TS and the m and teams that you have at the big four. The reason for this, it's a much smaller market and accounts for a much smaller proportion of the revenue when it comes to deal advisory. And the reason for this is things like TS and m and are more transaction focused. And so when there's more activity in the market, there tends to be a lot more revenue for that. Whereas with valuations, even though they are involved in transactions from time to time, a lot of the work does revolve around financial reporting. It also means you won't have a lot of transaction experience and you won't be able to list M&A transactions on your CV if you want to have like a deal sheet. In terms of exit opportunities, alongside M&A and TS is one of the most sought after divisions coming out of the big four if you want to go into things like investment banking or private equity. It's also a really good pipeline if you want to go into things like fund accounting for a private equity fund and also into other things like corporate development. The financial money skill set is one that is very highly valued within the industry. Let me know if you like this in-depth breakdown of division type videos and let me know what else you want to see. Please remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.